today it is with a great honor we host Mr. Masai Ujiri all the way from USA. He's the CEO of Toronto Raptors, an NBA team from Canada, and as well he's also a CEO of Giants of Africa Initiative. We are pleased and delighted to host him in halftime show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, You've been here in Rwanda for the last three days in the second edition of Giants of Africa. How was it uh, actually the camp? It was a three-day camp. What did you make of it? Uh, it was great. Uh, it was very good. Um, I think the, the level of the kids, um, uh, the skill of the kids was great. Uh, the energy, the passion um, is still... Uh, it's like we came last year and uh, all the years that I've been here. Um, we, first day we went to Rafiki, obviously, and um, um, we saw the progress of the court um, while refurbishing there, and that was uh, that was really great to see. And then just to start camp, uh, the camps are they are so energizing, you know, like um, it's it's so much fun to be on the, uh, in the gym with these kids and uh, see how much they believe and see how much they love the game. Initially, it was supposed the Rafiki court was supposed to be inaugurated on the first day, but it didn't happen. What actually happened that finally you didn't inaugurate the court? Uh, we we just felt the timing wasn't uh, wasn't okay, um, and um, a couple of things I wanted finished before um, we we haven't done the fencing, um, we haven't finished the flooring around. Um, uh, and a couple of the rims um, had not been put up on the on the side court yeah so um, when it's uh, we will definitely do it when it's uh, when it's ready but I'm happy with the progress it's made yeah. uh, I think so yeah that's that's the target so hopefully yes uh, I plan that we will um, I, I will be here uh, whenever that time is and whenever we we um, we decide to do it but yeah definitely I'll, I'll be here for uh, for the opening. Let's talk about a bit Giants of Africa initiative. Upon which personal experience uh, this idea came to create and found this uh, amazing Giants of Africa initiative back in 2003? Well, I, I, I figured that there are not that many basketball camps on the continent and I, I was a young youth like, uh, like these guys. Um, uh, growing up in Africa, and I knew, you know, what what it was like, you know, like to 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 see something like that. And then I was made by the director of basketball without borders, um, and this is where you bring a lot of kids all over Africa to South Africa, and the NBA brings um, uh, coaches. And once that really inspired me because um, I felt that we could go into different countries and actually do them in different countries, and um, that's how we came about. Uh, doing the Giants of Africa camps and even expanding to doing events and um, and other initiatives um, uh, under the umbrella of um, giving back, under the umbrella of uh, recognizing some of our um, uh, we have that Mandela night yeah so it's, it's to me um, uh, not just basketball it's a way to try and bring Africans together you know and and it's been it's been fun. Talking about that, Mr. Masai, someone might wonder him or herself, who is actually Masai Ujiri? Oh, <laughs> um, I'm me, I'm a normal, uh, um, I was a normal youth like these guys. I grew up in northern Nigeria in a town called Zaria, and I had an opportunity to go uh, to school in the States, play ball uh, in junior college, in college, uh, played overseas, and um, then kind of struggled a little bit trying to figure out, you know, what to do because I wasn't getting better in basketball. And so, um, what, what, what is there to do really? Um, uh, you fall back on uh, maybe your education, or, but I love the sport so much and went into uh, coaching and then found a little niche for scouting and uh, from, I was lucky enough to get a part-time job in the NBA and then a full-time job and kept getting promoted until um, I find myself in this uh, 
in this unique position now, which uh, it's a blessing. So you have to use that blessing, I think, to bless others. Uh, this is the second edition of Giants of Africa here in Rwanda. I don't know what about the other countries, but do you see or oh, to which extent uh, this Giants of Africa impacting on the basketball of the continent, especially in youth? Uh, it's my small way of giving, you know. Um, it's it's a it's not it's not a. Um, all of us can only contribute on little things that we're doing. It can it is not. Um, it can be a, a you trying to do too much, uh, and so the challenge with us is how does it become a program where um, it's all year round rather than. Um, only in August and uh, the problem with that is time you know like and um, but that would be the growth of our, our program years to come you know like is how do we develop something that is a year-round program and for now this is what we can do um, and give back give the kids gear encourage them uh, coaching uh, coaching on the court hopefully mentoring off the court and uh, we'll continue to grow from there uh Talking about that, uh, Africa is made of uh, over 50 countries uh, and uh, Rwanda is among six countries you've initiated this uh, Giants of Africa. Why Rwanda actually? Uh, I've been coming here, you know, before doing uh, little camps with the MBA um, under the umbrella of Sprite. And so when I came, uh, when we started choosing countries, I had already developed some relationships here. Uh, uh, and. Those relationships are were are really, uh, to me, um, special, and that it gave me um, it gave me the urge to come and do something here because uh, you have the support. Uh, sometimes you go to other African countries and it's tough, you know. Like and the way we operate, we come in at a certain time of the year. These guys do a great job. The basketball federation, they are awesome. Um, the country is just awesome to be in, you know, um, and, and I'm proud that and, uh, that any small way that I can be part of it is uh, it's, it's an honor. Uh, you mentioned those special relationships you created when you first uh, came here in Rwanda. One of those relationships is the one you have with His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Rwanda. Uh, how really close are you to his family, to him? Personally, uh, very close, uh, um, very, very, very close, and um, but those are private things, you know. Like, but um, he's been a mentor for me, and uh, his kids have been very, very good friends uh, of mine uh, for for a few years. And uh, but he's a great mentor, he's a great leader, and um, he's one of those persons that really encourages you with what you do, you know, like and encourages you as an African, you know, encourages you. Um, to come back and show the Africans the way, um, and um, that 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 was unique to me um, in his uh, friendship. He's a man of his words too. Um, I love that. You know, like he's not. Um, I don't see him really as a, um, as great as he is. When you get close to him, you don't see him as a president because he's such a good person, and uh, and. I really, I, I, I really appreciate that. Can, can you recall the first time you met? How did it feel? Uh, when, you, whenever you meet somebody like that, you're always nervous. You know, like uh, the first time, you know, like you feel, um, yeah, you feel, you just feel nervous, and um, you are, <laughs> you are in the, um, in the same room with a, a person like that. You know, like, but he's, he's such a. Um, a very calm person, you know, like, and as you get to know him, you are so much more comfortable, you know, like, a, uh, I, can't re I can't even remember what year we had come here to do, like, some Sprite camp, you know, like, but that was, that was the first time I met him, and, and then the relationship grew. He loves basketball, he loves sport, uh, which is, uh, <laughs> which is always, uh, always great. Yeah. Uh, uh, apart from that, you are the uh, executive of the, you are uh, the CEO of Toronto Raptors, one of the NBA teams uh, in the United States of America. So I'm wondering, how does it feel to be 
the CEO. You are the first, I'm not going to say you are the first and only, but you are the first African to have been the CEO of an NBA team. How does it feel? And back in 2013, you won an award of the NBA of Executive of the Year. How does it feel? It's a blessing. Uh, it's a huge blessing for me uh, to be in this position. But I always say I don't want to be uh, the first and the only one. You know, like uh, it's an honor to be the first, but um, there have to be more that follow after me. Um, that's, that's just life and, and the way it should be. Um, I, uh, I'm blessed to be where I am and um, I have to bless others um, and, and create a path for other African youth so they can see the path that I followed uh, and, and try to use basketball as a tool and maybe they can grow uh, also uh, and become bigger, uh, become bigger than myself. In your, in your mottos, uh, one of your motto in this Giants of Africa initiative is inciting kids, uh, calling on kids to dream big. So when you see in Africa, most of the kids are dreaming of playing in NBA. And when you were dreaming about that and finally you fail, uh, it doesn't look like you have been successful in your career. What's actually the message you have to these kids? Because you might be a good basketballer, but not good enough to play in NBA. So what, are you, what, what is your message to these kids who are dreaming this? Is it actually compulsory or necessary to play in NBA, in NBA or to dream when you are dreaming big? Does it mean to, to play in NBA? Uh, to me, when you dream, it's, it's something you really see in your head and, and uh, you want to become and every single person in this world is allowed to dream, you know, like every single person. It doesn't matter how rich, how poor. Uh, so if I'm dreaming I have money, why do I want to dream that I have $10? I want to dream that I have a million dollars, you know, like I'm allowed to. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, um, it's so these kids are encouraged to dream as big and you know what, if you inspire, if you um, uh, keep inspiring, keep aspiring to be better, keep, um, uh, keep that passion, keep, keep that energy and be true to yourself. Just dream as big as you can and you, you, uh, you get there. And even if you don't get there, you've already dreamt high enough, you know. So we encourage everybody, uh, the youth especially, you know, to, to, to dream big because there are no limits, you know. Finally, uh, what is your special message because I consider you as a better positioned person to give an inspiration message to the African kids, to the youth of Rwanda or the youth of Africa. What is your message which can inspire them wherever they are? Well, I, I, I always encourage the youth, you know, um, it's just what I said before, is to, is to dream, you know, um, uh, with all what goes on around the world uh, today, it's only this youth. Uh, of Africa that can change the world. Uh, so uh, walk with your heads high, you know, it's, um, um, be proud to be African um, and um, make a difference. Uh, however you can make a difference, whether um, it's in your job, whether it's in your school, whether it's in your family, um, make a difference. Uh, it's very important. It's very important to be honest. To, um, it's very important to uh, to respect women uh, is very important uh, for us uh, in, in our persons to have self-respect. And once we, this youth know how to do that at a young age, the sky is the limit uh, to me. Any words uh, about Toronto Raptors here in Rwanda? You have so many fans. Last year you reached the final. Uh, this year and the 2016-2017 season is coming. So what are the main objectives? And they, what's the way for? I, I was texting with Kyle and Damar yesterday, and they're so excited for the season. So um, go Raptors, even in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Masai. It was a very great honor to have you in the studio and to have you to have this interview with you. <laughs>